All right, on this basic review, we're going to focus on something a little bit different, as you can see. This is an AK-47 bullpup configuration from Century Arms. And a lot of people don't know about these configurations. And the people that do sometimes write them off as cheaply made. And I'll admit, they're not the greatest bullpups out there. These things range right around the $500 mark. So they're definitely not expensive when compared to other more expensive bullpups like the AUG and what kel has out on the market right now. Uh, the FNH 2000s and whatnot. But one thing that I think people can appreciate about this is the utility of this particular little rifle. And I'll explain it. Now, first off, the basic build around this rifle is off of a GP 1975 AKM, chambered in 762 by 39 Basically, all they did, as you can see, they put on some different furniture. They moved the trigger guard up here, of course. And that's to shorten the overall length of the rifle while still maintaining the full length barrel. Now, in comparison, I have my underfolder here with the stock out. You can see how it is a little bit longer. And then compare it to this bullpup version, which of course is a lot shorter. So you might say, well, what's the usefulness of this gun? You know, what can this gun do? Now, first off, if you're a left-handed shooter, this gun is not for you. That is because it's not left-hander friendly. If you put your face right here, this thing cycling back and forth is going to smack you in the cheek and it's going to injure you. So that is one thing about this rifle. It's not the best so-called tactical rifle because to be a good tactical rifle, in my opinion, you need, to, you need to be able to switch from your left hand to right side. You need to be ambidextrous with it. A regular AK, you can do that because your face isn't right up against the ejection port and you don't have this thing flying at your cheek. But with this configuration, that'd be a no-no. So for your lefties out there, sorry, this isn't the best rifle for you unless you learn to shoot off your right shoulder. For the righties, this will still work. And while this rifle I don't consider to be the most useful setup for a so-called tactical gunfighting situation, I think it does serve well as a truck gun, as a field gun, and as a basic self-defense gun. And I'll go more into that. Now, this rifle... I consider to be a 300 meter rifle and I'll explain why. The sights on it are much like an AR setup. As you can see here, you can see the A2 style rear peep. There's your 0 to 200 meter aperture and there's your smaller aperture. Windage adjustment only. It does not have an elevation meter at all. The front sight, standard post that's covered and you can see it's just an add-on to the original post sight so that way you can get uh, proper sight picture when having your face up on the receiver. You can see here this is just mounted securely onto the rear ladder setup. Now the front sight is elevation only and the rear sight is windage only. So between the two you can adjust and get a good zero off your rifle. And the sights are higher than normal on the barrel. You can see the difference between the sight and the barrel. I mean, we're talking like two and a half inches. So that's going to affect your zero a little bit, but you can play around with it and get right around a 200 to 300 meter zero. But what you don't have is the ability at longer ranges to do ladder adjustments like on a regular AK. When I get a regular AK sighted in, I can shoot 400, 500, even out to 600 meters using the ladder adjustments, just adjusting to the correct range. You can't do that with this rifle. So I consider it right around a 300, possibly a 200 meter gun, which is perfect for this type of rifle. This type of rifle is a very compact rifle. I don't expect it to shoot extremely far. That's just my personal opinion on it. Another thing about this rifle that does drive a decent amount of people away is the trigger pull. Because of the trigger setup, the trigger pull is a lot heavier than what people have come to expect off of AKs. Standard AKs that have like the Tapco G2 trigger, people enjoy about a four pound trigger pull on average. This is more like an eight or nine pound trigger pull at the very least, probably closer to a 10 pound. 
So you might be thinking, yikes, that's a heavy trigger pull. Well, the reason they do that is just on how they designed it. What they did is they wanted to stay as cheap and inexpensive as possible in the design so that way they can still provide an affordable bullpup type firearm. If they got too fancy with the engineering, the costs would go up and it would kind of defeat what they're going for. Now, the trigger pull, while heavy, it is consistent. The sear break is consistent. Also, the reset is consistent. So with a little bit of practice with the trigger, it is possible to get good quick shots. And over time, the trigger is going to uh, work itself in a little bit and get just a little bit slightly smoother over the use of time, but not much. Now, the trigger, let's go over the basics on this particular AK and kind of give you an idea of what they did. Now, first off, you see there's the trigger guard. There is still a trigger in here. It's just not being used. All this is, you can see, they just screwed on a replacement that covers up the pistol grip area and it covers up the trigger. But there still is a trigger and a standard trigger group inside. Up here, it's just a couple bolts holding on this two pieces, this shroud right here, this handguard, that can come off real easily. It's a standard AK setup with a 45 degree gas block and there is the bayonet lug still on it. This right here, standard upper and lower handguard setup. Field strip, you can still pull this out. And because you can pull this out, I think it's gonna create a neat little feature that a lot of people don't think about. And I'll go, about, I'll go over that here in a second. Lower is held on by a pin here. And there's basically a rod which you can see right here, you can see this rod. And when I move the trigger, here, let me take it off safe so I can get some more trigger motion here. You can see there's a trigger. When you press the trigger here, the rod is pretty much set around the trigger spring and sear right up back in here. And it engages the sear or releases the sear, which discharges around. Now, one thing that I really like and I think is a really good asset to this rifle and update capability is the fact that, number one, if you look at the sights, they're extremely high and they're that way out of necessity because if you got a good cheek weld, you got to have the sights higher to get a good sight picture. Because this handguard comes off normally, all you have to do is flip this up, pop the handguard off, Sometimes this sight is just enough far forward where the handguard won't come all the way off, but it's still enough where you can twist the plastic cover off. I recommend you get something like a Tapco upper. Try it if you guys have this rifle. A Tapco upper with a rail or an ATI or something cheap like that with the rail. And if you notice, if you put a rail on here, if you notice, the co-witness is going to be sweet if you get a regular full-size type red dot scope you will have a perfect co-witness off of this thing. Now I need to find a scope to try it over at Mitchell's and uh, you know, see how it'll look. Maybe I'll just throw a simple scope on there. We'll see how it goes. I'm just doing a basic review off of this rifle right now. By the way, I did not purchase this rifle. This rifle is on loan right now for Mitchell Supply here in Great Falls. It's just a neat rifle and when I looked it over, I was like, hey man, let me do a review on this. I think it's kind of neat. So that's what we're doing. It's just a real basic review, just to kind of go over the basics of this rifle, kind of give people an understanding of this rifle if they see it in the store or whatnot. And uh, that's, again, that's pretty much the intent of this. Now, this rifle, the one big thing I see is a good possibility of an excellent co-witness off a full-size red dot. So, if any of you guys have tried that, if you happen to own this type of rifle, please let me know. And... Let me know how it works because, like I said, with the measurements and whatnot, the best I can figure, you're going to get an awesome co-witness. And it's not like a one-third co-witness or something like that. With the height of the rail, like on a typical ATI type upper handguard and whatnot, that can be configured with either a low mount or, depending on the red dot, sometimes just a standard mount or spacer. That's going to get you a really good co-witness. That's going to be about center. It's not going to be one-third lower or one-third upper. It'll put you right in the center, right where you need to be. Another great aspect of this rifle is the ability to convert it back to a regular AK. This thing isn't so over-engineered and stripped out that you can't reconfigure it. The reconfigure will be easy. All you have to do 
pop the cover off, which exposes the trigger guard and the trigger. And then, of course, there was no special engineering back here. You can go ahead and put your uh, stock back on, uh, pistol grip, all that good stuff. Up here, take the two bolts out here, take this off, which exposes the uh, gas block here and your bayonet lug and all that good stuff. Take the pin out, take this off. The uh, cable right here just wraps around back here. That might be the most difficult part of converting this over is getting the cable, or not the cable, the rod here uh, disconnected from the trigger group. But once you do that, you can kind of thread it out and there you go. You'll have your standard trigger group. You can go ahead and put your hand guards on. As far as the sights go, the sights are the same way. Take this screw out, pop a pin out. This should come off of your rear sight and you can put a leaf on it and the same with this. Take your front post off. This will come out right here, and this will go off of your front post, and then you can put a standard post sight in its place. Once you get that done, there you go. You've got a standard AK again. So I kind of like that fact that you can still convert it if you want. For guys out there, if they buy this and over the years are like, man, I'm just tired of this thing. They can convert it to a standard AK. So all right, I hope the video was a little bit informative. Again, this gun runs for about $500. This gun is going to be back on sale at Mitchell's for that price. Uh, sometimes you can find them cheaper, sometimes a little bit more expensive. It all depends on your area. Go ahead and give him a call. I'm going to leave the link to his website. Tell him that I was talking about this rifle, and if you're interested, uh, he may make a deal for you. So, again, this rifle is about $500. Bucks, and, again, I also encourage you to look around if you can find a better deal, you know, um, I'm not going to tell you not to go for it. If you want to get this rifle, you deserve to find the best deal you can. But give Mitch a call if you're interested in this particular one, and he might hook you up. So, with that said, I hope it was an informative review. I liken this gun, again, to a truck gun. A good, solid little truck gun. A basic field gun. If you go hiking a lot and you need something, like you're worried about mountain lions or something like that well the 762 by 39 is big enough to handle a mountain lion or a medium-sized predator type animal and it's definitely small enough and easy enough to pack uh, slung up or pack in some type of rucksack or whatnot so I look at that as another possible use for this gun and for basic home defense so thanks a lot for watching uh, again I hope you found it informative Feel free to leave your comments, and first off, I know the AK uh, purists are going to cringe at this rifle, but you know what? There's a lot of neat guns out there. Just take a look at them. Again, you know, this thing can always be converted back. And lastly, stay safe.